This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Check out all their services in the link below. Hello, I'm really excited to share version two of the Taco Tuesday BattleBot design. And I'm gonna be using this AR iPhone app for this, which I think will be cool. Uh, let me know how it works. Before we get started, I wanna be clear that I'm the one presenting, but Dave and Warren on our team did the vast majority of the CAD design. Um, and they did a really good job. So I wanna give a shout out to them. And uh, yeah, let's get started. All right, so here is the version two design being displayed in full scale. So when built, it actually will be as big as my coffee table. Looking at this design, you'll see that it looks very similar to the initial design. Um, the proportions are the same, uh, the actual curve of the shell is the same, but basically everything else is different. All the components are different. So let's start with the weapon. Um, this is massive. It's like a little bit over 50 pounds and we now have two discs and we've tucked the belts in between the discs and this little guard that is on the pulley. With our prior design, the belts were vulnerable and we lost all four of them. So we really don't want that to happen again. And I think that the belts are now properly kind of tucked in here. It's gonna be really hard for an opponent to get our belts unless they have a very thin blade and they come in perfectly straight. If they come in at an angle, they'll hit you know, something else first. And then up front, another thing that makes this area a little bit less vulnerable than last time is we actually pulled the shell forward a little bit. So if a horizontal blade comes in, it's gonna hit the shell before it hits our kind of important aluminum uh, plate here. Um, and this shell can be sacrificed. Um, so in general, the front end of our robot is just a lot less vulnerable than it was last time. Now let's uh, move on to the weapon motors. So you'll see these are mounted up top. The opponent that we faced, Disarray, was able to slip their belts between um, the two pulleys and then test their weapon motors without spinning up their weapon. And we were really jealous of that. So we essentially copied that configuration. The weapon motors are definitely more vulnerable to overhead attacks, um, but they're a lot more serviceable. We'll be able to spin them up without spinning the weapon. And uh, they're also a little bit easier to tension. Um, let's see if I can toggle the uh, shell off. You can see we've got some slots here and this whole thing can you know move back and forth to tighten the belts. It's just a much more serviceable weapon motor setup than we had in the past. And while we're talking about motors, uh, this cylinder is our placeholder for the front drive motor. The motor is gonna be the same as last time, um, but we will have a solid rubber tire instead of the pneumatic tire that we had last time. And our speed controller tuning for this front motor is significantly better than it was on version one of this robot. Back motor is now shared with the front motor. It's the exact same motor, so it's easier to have spare parts. And you'll notice it is now an Omni wheel. And if I'm being honest, uh, we were kind of just bullied into making this rear Omni wheel. All the comments on the first version were like, why isn't the rear wheel an Omni wheel? So, now we have an Omni wheel in the rear and it's not trivial to get an Omni wheel to survive robot combat because um, they're kind of small, they got a lot of pieces um, and if they're not done right, if you just buy an off the shelf Omni wheel, they'll be delicate and they'll break. So this Omni wheel is made out of an inch thick um, sheet of UHMW that's milled to shape and then the rollers are skateboard wheels. And on the front side, we've got a reinforcement plate of metal that is bolted on. And then you can kind of see how um, these little end caps hold in the axle um, that the uh, skateboard wheel rolls on. So it's difficult to make a durable Omni wheel. But Warren did a pretty great job here. It's definitely more durable than any off the shelf Omni wheel would be. And early testing shows that it does significantly improve our maneuverability. All right, and you'll see that that rear Omni wheel is mounted to a weldment, a one inch uh, you know, tube steel, but that the rest of the frame um, is not tube steel at all. It is one inch thick uh, aluminum plating. So this aluminum frame is definitely the biggest change we have for version two. Uh, version one used it a welded tube steel frame. And the reason we did this isn't because it's lighter or stronger or anything like that. It's due to ease of fabrication and repairability. So we can, you know, water jet a bunch of spare parts out of the single sheet of one inch, uh, you know, aluminum and show up to the competition. If something gets bent, we undo a couple bolts and then replace that part. 
they'll be way easier in the long run, you know, match three, match four, match five, to keep our robot working. So yeah, apart from you know the mounting of this rear Omni in the back, um, we just have these one inch thick aluminum plates that make up everything. And they are then um, flanked by these plastic ribs. So these are UHMW ribs that bolt on and we kind of call this the dead fish. But the idea is these things are like really hard, um, but they become quite compliant when you have the force of, uh, you know, a battle bot hitting you. And so they almost form springs. When we are hit, um, you know, the shell will deflect a little bit. Hey, Allie, you're, uh, you're in the way. Um, the shell will deflect a little bit, and then all these UHMW ribs kind of form a spring in between the UHMW shell and then our uh, aluminum, you know, frame. So the whole robot itself is really only about 10 inches wide and it's all aluminum. And then the armor is this spring UHMW system that is going to take quite a bit of distance to punch through. Like, you know, you can go six inches into this and you're not going to hit any of our valuable electronics or motors or anything like that. And I'm going to end the overview here. I could talk about this forever, but I got to wrap it up. We've got one month until we compete, so we have a lot of fab to do. I'll have update videos as we get this robot put together and as we compete. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Who, like, <laughs> tells me never to use adhesives <laughs> for, like, things. It's like, you get enough surface area. It's <laughs> great. Yeah. I don't want to break it. Uh, all right. This video is going to be my rebuttal for all the... Got it. All the downers. <laughs> <laughs>